Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we've got this Craftsman 19 and a half horse, 42 inch mower. I don't remember if this runs or not. I don't think it does. I've had a few in the yard for quite a while now. <laughs> I'm just getting through them here. It's winter. It's well, the end of December now. And uh, I'm getting through them. I've got four of them done in the last week. So we're moving along. Now I did try and I did crank it over and it wouldn't fire. So I sprayed carb cleaner down the carb and it would fire on that, but not on the spray that's coming flying out of the carburetor. So set tight for the intro and we'll find out what's going on after that. Okay, well, I figured that out. <laughs> It'll run on carb cleaner, but it will not run on what's in the tank. There's about an oh, inch and a bit of liquid in the tank. And looking down there, about half of it is water. So the water's laying in the bottom of the gas tank. That is definitely a problem because the water's at the bottom fuel pump's going to pump the water out first and fill the carburetor full of water and engines don't run on water. Right, Bill? <laughs> so we're going to have to drain the fuel system out. It does crank nice. It's a 19 and a half horse Briggs horizontal. So that's a flathead, no overhead valves. I like these engines. They got a unique sound. They, they've got lots of power, but Due to emissions, they had to go to something more efficient, so they went to the overhead valve style. But this engine, there's nothing wrong with these engines. Great engines. Yeah. And we'll go over the deck and the drive and everything. This is a gear unit. This doesn't have a hydrostatic transaxle in it. It's a gear-driven unit. I did already have the air filter and everything out. But, uh, yeah. So, I'm going to get set up here, get it lifted up. I'm going to pull the fuel line off the carburetor. Well, the fuel pump. There's a fuel pump in the front of it. I'm going to pull the line off of that and see if I can get most of the water out of that fuel tank. And we'll start with that as a base. We'll change the spark plugs out right away. No sense running on those in there. It's going to get new ones anyways. So we'll, we'll drain it all out and uh, see what comes out of it. All right, so this is a 2000 vintage, according to the code on the engine. And the fuel pump has no output hose. It outputs directly into the side of the carburetor. So there's a line coming from the bottom or into the bottom of the, the pump here. That's their pulse line. And then it, the feed line is here. So the fuel comes in the here, it pulses from the bottom and it shoots it directly into the side of the carburetor. So I can't just take a hose off and pump it out. Let's get this plug off the side of the carb here. We'll see what comes out of the float bowl. Well, it's gonna be full of crap because it's dirty, but let's see. Let's see. Try and keep dirt out of it. Gasket came off. <laughs> well, there's a little bit of gas in there. Just a little. Yes, there is that much in the that much in the corner of the cup. That much of it is gas floating on the top. It is uh, pretty much water. Yeah. So, that's drained out. Should be able to see the jet in there, I think. Yep, there's the jet. <laughs> it does look clean. It looks spotless, actually. I'm just gonna put that plug back in. Just because the water's out of it now. So what I'll do is I will take the line off here at the feed. And I will either pull a suction on this to pull it through the whole system, or I'll put pressure in the fuel tank, just a little bit of pressure in the fuel tank and it'll evacuate it out this hose here. Well, that hose is all cracked to crap anyways. Uh, well, we might be changing that hose. But we're gonna use the old hose anyways. It's hard as a rock and I can actually see it all cracked. That needs a new one. Can't leave it like that. That's fuel leak right on top of the muffler. 
So we're going to swap that out, change it. But yeah, we're going to use it to get the water out of the system anyways. So yeah, stand by for that. Okay, so what I did was I disconnected the fuel line here before the filter. Put this little barb in there. I put another piece of hose on there and I ran it down to the bottom. And I had to pressurize the gas tank to get it to come out. It wouldn't siphon. I tried. But this is what we dug out of it. Let's see if we can get a picture of that. See the milk in the bottom? That's water. So it wasn't quite half. But there's a lot of water in that. And I don't know for sure, but I have a theory that it comes in through the fuel cap. The fuel cap on these is under the seat. And of course, you flip the seat forward so it doesn't get beat on by the sun and you know, destroy your seat. But then when it rains on that gas cap, I think it makes its way under either under the vent little vent on the top or it sits around the edge here and there it could be leaking in around that edge of the gauge itself the little level gauge i don't like this style but it is what it is it's what i got so let's try to pull some new line through because it's not i don't want to take the engine covers off if i don't have to so what i'm going to do is i'm going to shove this barb up inside the old hose. I need a pair of pliers here. <clears throat> I'm gonna push that barb up in there. As far as I can, so it has as much friction as possible. And then, because I don't want it to slip apart, I'm gonna slide this new piece of hose on there, but it's got lots of friction. I can't put a clamp on it because it'll get hung up. So let's see if we can just use that to pull it through. Maybe. Wow, well, that was absolutely easy. <laughs> there she is. New lines installed. Get off of there now. <sighs> yep. New lines through. <laughs> oh yeah, I might have to cut that off. That barb is in there. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll cut it off. Where's my cutters? sacrifice a quarter inch of line to make it easy so yeah that goes through there we're onto this side into the fuel pump but let's get the clamp on it how was that in there was it like this probably was it under here i don't know Maybe. Clamp on the fuel pump. There we go. Then we can pull our slack back a little bit. That'll be fine, I'm sure. Nice. And I'd like to get a better fuel filter in there. It just had one of those little screens. Let's get a fuel filter here up on the wall. Crinkle, crinkle. And the line that runs to the tank is perfectly fine, actually. There's no, uh, it's not hard, no cracks in it. Let's get that in there. Get that, lick it, get a little lubricant on there, maybe. Get it to slide in as far as it can go. These filters are combination quarter and five sixteenths <clears throat> you can jam that five sixteenths up in there like i just did but it's uh it's an effort so what's that is there just enough yeah i'm sure it'd be okay to give it a little extra on that end let's cut this off here Get her on that filter. Yep. In she goes. Yeah. Get in there. Let's 
just get in your home. I'm trying to force it up over the 516th part. We just don't have a lot of room here for the filter. But that's in. Nice. And the line is not kinked. And the line is fine up here. You know what? It probably went on top. Just because it's sitting on the throttle linkage. Let's get it back off of here. Let's just put it over and under and around. Back in the fuel pump. There we go. That's better. That's more better. Beautiful. Plug wire off. This plug wire off. Spin those plugs out of there. Should be a J19 LM. Standard Briggsy flathead spark plug. It's the end of the day, but I want to see this thing running today. We'll put a splash of gas in it. Doesn't even smell like gas. Just smells like water. <clears throat> These are, yep, J19 LMs. I got those in stock. One and two. They're not so common on tractors and stuff anymore, but these spark plugs are still very common on snowblowers. Because I still see a lot of older snowblowers. We're going to get those at 28 real quick here. That's not 28. That's 34. 28. 28. Nice. Ooh, shiny spark plugs. There we go. Uno. Dos. How's that choke working? Good. Good enough, it moves. I gotta clean my bench. Cause I can't even see the bench. So much crap on this. <clears throat> Rotten old fuel line, garbage. Let's get some fuel in there. Get some 91 octane, non-ethanol. Let me, uh, I'll just turn the camera a little. 91 octane, non-ethanol. The octane is not important. The non-ethanol is important. If you can get non-ethanol, that's what you should be running in these things. They just don't like the ethanol. Carburetors are, it's just, it's not good for them. Well, it should be enough to run anyway. It's going to take a little bit of cranking to get that whole system full because I've emptied it. It's completely empty. It's gonna boost. There's no battery in the tractor. i got a booster pack here and we'll just leave the boost pack on. That way the alternator sees a battery and sees a resistance and it doesn't full field and burn itself up let's get all the rattly bits off the hoist no place for that stay there what do you think should run like this ah what's the worst can happen choke Fuel filter's full. It just pumped right up. That pump is working good. Let's see.
Actually, I started to run a little slower. Just fine, because it was probably running too lean. This filter is spotless clean. Your air filter changes the tune of the engine. I don't remember if I bought this as a running unit. Let's keep going here. So one of the first things I do when I bring a machine into the shop is I inflate all the tires to recommended pressures. Usually it's 10 in the back and 14 or 15 in the front. I put 15 in the front. And that way, as it's in the shop, I can see if any tires are going down and I can fix them appropriately. But anyways, so this one and both back ones hold air, no problem. The right front is completely empty again. So got to put a tube in that. That's good. I got them in stock. Let's get the deck out of here. We got some things that are not moving correctly so they're like the engagement lever is not quite 100 percent. it's stiff we'll just get it out of here it's pretty easy on these actually the panhard bar on the back on the back of it that controls your left to right i'll just flip the belt out of here usually they come off easy <clears throat> yep there we go that's off there's a clip here at the back of this lift lever here pop the lever off sometimes you got to give them a little lift there we go that one's off might as well grab the front rod too get i need pliers this tractor has been sitting a while there's that one same thing on this side. Get out of there. That's out. Little lift on the deck. The lift bracket is tight, seized on there almost. We're gonna clean all the stuff up. Oh, there we go, lift brackets up. Now I can raise the control lever. The deck should slide out of the well. I've already taken I've already taken the cable off. Should mention that. Slide that out. Here we go. Some decks are easier than others. Well, the bearings aren't seized, but I don't think they're good. The belt is going to get a new one, so let's just take it off. Of the idlers, anyways. Get it off that pulley. Can we get it off this pulley? Maybe not with the cover on it. Eh? Get the brake away from there. Might help us. That's uh, a lot stiffer than it's supposed to be. Yeah, get the belt right out of there anyways. It's glazed and shiny and it's gonna get a new one. Any number on that one? No visible numbers, that's fine. I have the actual manual downloaded for this machine, downloaded by model number. So I should be able to get parts easily figured out for that. Check this idler out, it's a little loose. Loose and noisy. Probably gonna get a new one. Get the, maybe we get it break away a little bit. There we go. We'll check this spindle. No play in it. Not really growly. That one might be okay. 
but all the linkage is tight. So let's see if we can get to this one. Pull the brake away. Not growly. I got bearings, maybe okay. As far as the blade condition, that feels good. We're gonna flip it over and scrape it and clean it anyways. We'll have a better look at the blades. Let me vacuum the rubbish off of here. We're gonna paint this. It looks like crap. So we're gonna mask the stickers off. We're gonna take the plastic chute off. We're just gonna paint everything black. Just make it look better. I really like the Craftsman decks. They're very strong, they're very thick. They're made of a thick material. They're easy to work on. Parts are available everywhere for them. Oh well, yeah, let me get this cleaned up and then we can get into here and start taking things apart maybe and lubricating stuff. Get it to work smoothly. All right, well, we've got the actuating lever all working properly now. So underneath here, is a, an assortment of shouldered spacers and washers. And what happens is over time, in between here, this metal gets rusty and you'll lose all that clearance and then the stuff doesn't pivot anymore. So I just ground everything, got all the rust off it, put some grease on it so it's moving nice and free now. You can see everything, the spring-loaded part is doing what it's supposed to do. And there's a double cam over here on the bottom of this plate. One cam moves this uh, brake and the other cam moves this brake, it just moves it off the pulley. Well, it works good. Perfect. Still gotta replace this. I don't know if I have one. I can order one. Let me go check my stock. I might have one. All right, well, I got the deck flipped down. I'm gonna order one of those pulleys because I didn't have one in stock, so we'll figure something out with that. I'll order one and I'll change it later. But let's do a quick blade inspection. They're on the right way. <laughs> That's a bonus. So, I'm just gonna line it up so the tips are pointing together. Make sure they're even, both sides. And they are. So that tells me that the blades aren't bent that the deck is straight, it's not wonky. And yeah, deck's in good shape. It was pretty pretty clean, actually. I'm gonna oil spray that. Do I do it now or do I do it after I paint it? I better do it after I paint it. <laughs> so I'm gonna oil spray that after I paint it. But let's, uh, we're gonna jump back on the tractor. We're going to go underneath and just, well, I'm going to go underneath. I'm just going to lubricate everything that moves and I'm going to do a dry belt inspection. And then we've got a little bit of body work to do. The front, the hood on this thing is, uh, got some damage. I want to try and see if I can fix that. By, uh, putting some bracing in. It's plastic and it's broken. Somebody's tried to glue it before. But we're going to see if we can get something a little better in there. Get this wet stuff off of here so I can get under there without getting filthy. Light bulb. Drive belt. Ooh, it's like new. Check the police, there's a bunch of idlers under here. A couple of idlers anyway. Looks like it's in real good shape. The drive belt is perfect. Absolutely perfect. So I'm gonna get a little spray grease under there. I'm gonna grease everything that moves, the lift linkage, the brake slash clutch pedal, all that stuff is gonna get all lubricated so it doesn't squeak. Make sure everything moves smoothly. I don't like squeaks. <laughs> Makes it sound like something's falling apart. So get that lubricated and probably get the tractor out of here and paint the deck and work on the hood. There's a list. Hey, I was just about to pull this outside and I uh, remembered I had to put a tube in the other tire. Might as well do it now, that way I don't have to bring an air peg out there and reinflate the tire to get it back in the shop. But uh, anyways, this uh, vinyl plastic rubber, I don't know, whatever it is, this cap, it's supposed to be squishy. Man, this one was on there. Just a quick tip. If you gotta get these off, I like to have them on there. I, I wanna reuse it, but uh, if you can't get it off, it's really hard to, to get it to come off because it's hardened up. Just hit it with a heat gun or the wife's hairdryer. Don't tell her. Make sure you wipe it off before you put it back in the 
bathroom, but uh, yeah, hair dryer gets some off. Okay, so the deck went outside and got painted. Tractor's outside now. I've got the hood here. I don't think I'm going to be able to make this thing pretty, but at least I can make it solid. So here is a, that's a hinge. The hinge is over here, but you can see it's not really attached to anything. It's kind of a floating Bluetooth type, type of hinge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get a bunch of plates in here and just screw them across or rivet them in or, or do something. I just got to make this solid. It doesn't have to be pretty. I'm going to get rid of most of this garbage, whatever that is. I think it's spray foam. I don't even know what it is. It's a mess. But I'm going to clean it up and get it as strong as I can. And I'll get the lights working and everything, make sure that the bulbs are good because I like the headlights to work. And we'll see what, see what we get. I'm not going to record any of this. So I'm just going to be piddling away at it and just picking and see what I can do with it. We'll see what I come up with. Well, that's what I came up with. It ain't fancy. Still got a hole here. What are you going to do? I don't have a hood for it. So I put a big plate in behind here, metal plate, four rivets. Put another strip of plate in here because that rib was bent or broken too. And there's no room behind this because that's where the, the bracket is for the for the hinge, the hood hinge. So I did put one on the outside. So I just made an L bracket here. It's all riveted in. It, it is what it is. I. It's not pretty. But it's strong. As strong as it's going to get. And I took the lens out and I cleaned the little reflector underneath there and wiped the bulbs down because they were dusty. Uh, I haven't tested them yet, but we'll test them on the tractor when the tractor comes back in. Which should be tomorrow. It's the end of the day. The deck is going to dry overnight. And we'll be able to get that tractor back in here. Get the deck on it. I'm going to go ahead and put the deck on there. I'm going to order that pulley that's growly. I'm just going to order one anyways, and I'll swap it out later. But I want to get the thing pretty well 99.5% done. That way I can move on to another one. So, All right, so I got the thing on, lowered down a little bit. I got the hood on there after I repaired it and go to move some stuff around to make sure everything works. And the cable breaks for that gauge, the blade engagement. You can see this. The end of the cable is still attached here. The part of the sheathing is just below it where it goes through the bracket to retain it. And it feeds down underneath the tractor to, uh, where are we? This point here. Anyways, I just unhooked it out of there. I gotta get some pliers up inside there and squeeze that little retainer and then drop the cable out and get that end off. And I don't have a cable in stock for it, so. <laughs> Something else on order. Well, let's do a recap and put this one to bed. Still have the cable on order, still have the pulley on order, that little idler under the deck. That's fine, I'll switch them out another time. I have other units I gotta get in here and get done. <laughs> Quick recap, we did the, uh, well, we got the water out of the fuel. It was lots. I lubed everything. I had the deck off. It's got a brand new belt on it. The bearings and the spindles were good. One idler we need. While I had it off getting painted it and, and getting it painted, I had the, uh, I pulled the blades off and give them a quick sharpen and balance. We got the engine running, runs good, change of oil. One tube in the tire, they all now hold air. Fix the hood here, it's not, perfect and pretty but uh, it's there and it's solid it works goes up goes down tuned it up it's got a, it does have a fresh air filter in it it had one I didn't have to change that I did uh, spark plugs and yes the lights are working greased up the front spindles they got grease fittings on them grease the hubs in the front rears don't need it they don't have any grease fittings so springtime comes, I'm going to need to give her a good wash and I might do a quick polish on the hood and the fenders and just to tidy it up a little bit, clean it up, make it look a little better. But uh, yeah, that's going to be the end for this one. What's next? John Deere LA145. That needs body off paint. It, there is not a stitch of paint left on that mower deck, I don't think. And the rest of the body is... There's, 
It says John Deere on it, but that's the only part that should be able to tell that it's a John Deere because I don't think there's any green left on the on the body. The hood's plastic and it's all green, but anyways, that's for another video. Thanks for joining me, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you do subscribe, click that little bell icon. It'll let you know when I upload new stuff. Till the next one, take care.